And we're on. And welcome to Tony for this third, almost, I guess it's an annual thing now, uh, where you come return and toss some gold dust on us, uh, enlighten us in all you, all your magic knowledge. And uh, to get, today, um, you and Peter have uh, talked about that you're going to... Um, so tell us about uh, channels and, and the way you use them. And we are yeah. really thrilled about this. So um, without further ado, take it away, Tony. We'll jump in. Sweet. Sounds great. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here and you'll we'll get yapping on all these channels. So um, the gist of it right now, you have to realize that algorithms right, are running the markets, right? Computers. So we've got these algorithms running the markets. Make sure everything's good on this. Cool. Um, with that, we've got to figure out what they're doing and what they're looking at. So one of the best ways to figure out what these algorithms are doing is to find channels. Now, I incorporate channels into the S-curve. So we talked about the S-curve before, right? It's anytime we're making a move like this. And whenever we're making that type of move, um, I want to be connecting this with channels. So I want to be waiting for my higher lows to come in, following my specific rules for those higher lows. And I am simply just tying in these two points, okay? And then I am taking this angle right here and I am connecting it to the rejection spot. And that's how I'm drawing my channel. So let me give you an example of this. Whenever, um, let's see here. Trying to figure out what would be the there is one right there, but that's a little bit more difficult. Let's let's go with this here. In fact, I'm sorry, I'm not more prepared on this guy. I will um let's do it on this where it has just a little bit less. It's not quite as busy. All right. So, and by the way, you can use this on any time frame. But whenever I am watching an S curve come through and it doesn't give me a complete picture. So remember, we want the S-curve to get back to its key level, which is right there. Anytime we come up and then it starts to fail and it never makes it back up to that key level, I immediately connect those two points with a channel line, okay? And then I take that angle and I draw it down to the bouncing spot here and now I've got a channel. This is what the algorithms are doing and they're using these channels to bounce off of it and they're using this top channel to, to reject off of it until it breaks out. So this is a really good example right here. We come up, it comes back down, and then it comes back up. We never made it back up to this key level. So what do we do? Well, we draw a channel on this. You take it from the top of that there and we take it to here. And then you take that angle and you draw it down to the bounce. And you're gonna realize this is where it rejected the second time. This is where we had all of our bouncing it kind of trapped through here and then it finally bounced. So that's how I'm drawing these channels. And all I'm all it's doing basically is it's it's utilizing the S curve. So have you ever run into this problem with the S curve? Let me get all these things out of the way. Where you are in a bear trend, right? We're bearish, but then you start getting higher lows coming in. People get very confused on this a lot. And they're like, well, we're making higher lows and higher highs, but we have never taken out the lower high to break the bear trend. Whenever this is happening, this is simply an up channel. This is simply the algorithms resting this move, resting the RSI, resting the indicators, letting the EMAs catch up after this big move. And whenever this thing breaks down, that's when this is going to resume. So it's almost like a pause going on. And you can find that whenever it ne whenever it fails to make it back to the key level. So here's your key level on a down move. If it fails to come down there and starts to bounce, again, I immediately tie those in, take that angle and bring it over to there. Okay. Again, the angle is everything on this. And so I'm trying to figure out ahead of time how I can make money with this by predicting where the markets might be trying to go to. And a good example of that is SPY right here. Okay. So we have SPY, I have a channel here. You see how we have a new low and then we failed to make it down to this low. So then I drew this guy and this has been the bouncing spot. Where have the rejection spots been? Right at the top side of the channels. And so it came up to the top side of that channel. I expect this to 
reject. Where do I expect this to most likely get bought up at? The bottom side of this channel and continue until it breaks. And when this thing breaks, it tends to lead to a pretty large move down. And so that's what I'm waiting. You can wait for breakouts of channels, which is what my favorite thing is, or you can try to play them inside. I have very specific rules for all of that, but it's not a coincidence that we are selling off right here or that we sold off right here or that we're bouncing through here. And it won't be a coincidence again whenever it probably bounces down through here again. Okay. Um, let me turn on my chat pane to make sure I have anything here. Um yeah, and and Henrik, I'm I'm happy to answer questions and, and kind of like what I've just talked about before I move on to the next thing. I'm happy to answer any questions that it comes down to, but I just wanted to give you a general type overview of what these channels are, and then we'll dive in more detail of how I exactly draw them. We'll do it on some charts and get some practice drawing them and how you can use them a little bit more. So any questions on that? Can you explain on the channel you've got on the spy again how you found it? Yeah, of course. So it it makes a lot more sense if I go back. So if I go back to here, um, we started to we made a new low, right? And then it failed to ever make it back down to this low. It started to bounce back up, and so once that happens, then I start drawing it. And I, I have to fast forward this a little bit here. So once we pull back down. So I have an angle right here. That's what I started drawing this guy. And then I connected it to that. So as soon as I can get an angle, if this would have just given me one more, then I could have drawn this guy and use it to the top side, but it didn't. So then I'm waiting for multiple touches to the top side. So basically I'm waiting on two touches on one side so that I can connect the dots. If those two touches come on the top side, I connect those first, take that angle and draw it down. That's exactly what I did here. So once this started to drop, I was watching this for an up channel. Whenever we started to come up here and then reject hard, I connected those two and drew it down there. So it is kind of an art, so to say. It takes a little bit of practice, um, but that's how I that's how I drew this one. And you can draw down channels because right here, See how we had a key level right here that we never made it up to? So I guess that's a better example here that you might be helped out with. So we're bullish right now on this trend. It came down. Where should this thing get to? Well, it should get up to here. It bounced up and then started to fall. So I immediately draw a channel there. And I did draw that channel. And I waited for that channel to break out. And that's normally when the bull move is going to come. So if I draw this channel here and connect these two points, you can see that we bounced, 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 almost bounced there. Maybe it did when it got one more lower. There we go. And it should bounce. There we go. So that was the bottom. And I'm just waiting for this channel to break out. That's going to tell me it's time to go bullish. And once this thing went bullish and gave me another touch, then I started to draw this up channel to manage it. It's very confusing. It takes a lot of explanation and a lot of practice. But once you get these, this should be the bounce. There you go. Once you get this, then now I know this down channel broke out. It's probably going to be pretty bullish, and it's going to be pretty bullish until this up channel breaks, and then it'll be time to go bear. So the channels really help you to time things up a little bit better. But I'm just simply using the S curve to figure out what the channel is. Okay. Any other questions so far on that before we give a few more examples that might help? Perfect. Cool. So that's how I came about finding these two channels. So I actually had a down channel drawn and then I deleted it because it's already moved on it. And now I'm just watching this channel. So if we get rid of the back trade here and we start watching this, this is probably going to continue to come up and ride this top channel. And then it's going to drop eventually here and, and head down to the bottom of this. This is very, very strong. I don't expect a lot of bears to come in until we start breaking down this channel. We'll see what happens. But it probably won't be today. There's not enough time really today, to, in my opinion, to do this unless some crazy selling comes in. But this is extremely strong and it's probably setting the tone to continue to go higher. The bears didn't do their job at all on this gap. 
I mean, it is extremely strong. Extremely, extremely strong. Cool. Let's practice drawing a few more of these and giving you some more examples. And I'll teach you how you can use these to help manage the trades that you're in and how you can use them to get into trades. All right. So if we go out, let's go out to a big time frame. Let's go out to a weekly. All right. And if we again start to zoom in here, I'll delete some of this stuff here. Um, I'll delete that as well. I've got it on the other one. Cool. Let me hide all these lines. Awesome. Okay. So as we start going lower and we start dipping, I'm my eyes automatically kind of catch this pattern. Do your eyes catch that? It seems like they're all lined up. So in that case, I go through here and I'm going to start drawing these and connecting right at the highs. And then I'm going to bring it down here. And the tool that I'm using to do this, and you can draw it on any one of these bounces. I just try to find the one that bounces the most on it. Probably that one. Those touch perfect. So that's probably the channel. The tool that I'm using on this is the second one down here on the left. If you open it up and then you come down to where it says parallel channel, that's the tool that I'm using. It's a really good tool. Really easy. So now that I've got a channel drawn on this, I am simply waiting for the bulls to break out of it. All right. So once, once we break out right here, we finally got some weekly candle closures outside of this down channel. Finally got some weekly candle closures outside of it. What I'm now waiting on, that's step number one, is get a candle close outside of it. Step number two, wait for a retest back to it. That's the place to go long. Okay, so now we're going to fast forward some of these candles. And we're waiting for a retest right there. Boom. There's your retest. That's your place to go long. And I'd probably have my stop down here somewhere below the higher low. This should be the place where the bulls step in. And then I'm pretty sure they do. So we use the channel to get into the trade. Can we now use the channel to manage the trade? Yes. So if I connect these two points, the main bouncing spot there and there, and I draw it up to here, you can see how I've got it rejected off of that top side, rejected off of that side. I now know what these algorithms, what these computers are doing. They're buying off of this and they're taking their profits off of that. Most likely. So as we come up, most likely it'll be the place where it starts to drop down. And as we drop down, this is most likely the place to bounce it. And we keep doing it until we get candle closures outside of it. Is it possible for us to get a trap? Yes, very possible. But most of the time, especially on a weekly, it's going to be pretty consistent. So if we fast forward this, this is a place, wow, again, not a coincidence that we hit the top of that. And we drew this channel before it ever got there, like two months before it ever got there. This is the place where people are taking their profits, right? Can it continue to go higher? Yes, but this makes a lot of sense. So it's all about drawing that channel early. And now we use this channel to tell us when to get in. So we got in down here. We are absolutely crushing life. And now we're using this channel to help manage the trade that we are in. So we're taking profits here and we're looking to add down here. And we're taking profits here and we're looking to add down here, right? If it can play out that way. So it just keeps on going. And then it comes down here to the add spot. So you can see where people are trying to buy this thing. This actually ended up putting in a trapping candle, which is pretty interesting. It rolled down and then screamed higher. And yes, I did buy over here. <laughs> and... Then I bought some puts to cover that. It came down. I bought even more calls like right here because this was just a retest. And I was like, I doubt it, right? I doubt that it's coming down. If you notice right here, did we ever make it back up to this key level? No, we didn't. So what I did at that time was I drew a channel down through here. And then I connected it to the bouncing spot. And so I figured this was probably a pretty close place of where these bulls are going to come in if they're going to. And if the bears are actually going to be here, we should hit right here and it should drop. 
we should retest the channel and drop. So if the bears don't step in and we start going up, it's time to exit bear trades, add more bulls, and it's going to go higher. Okay. So did the bears come in at all? No, it blew right through it, which means time to exit bear trades and go even more bullish because that was a trap. And it's just going to squeeze all the bears out. And so I bought all the way through here and just crushed this trade. And by the time we made it to all-time highs, I think about right through here, I started taking my profits. Just because it was a thousand candles in a row. Like it just made sense to me. And we were that close. But we continue to go up. We're hitting the top side of this channel. So what is that telling us? Could it go higher? Yeah, it can. But it's most likely a place to take profits we are getting close to coming back down to the bottom of the channel. It's just a matter of time. This is where we're currently at right now. We've officially broken outside of that, but this brings me to the next place where I want you to understand. I'm only looking for bear trades to get in. I'm only looking for bear trades in up channels. So I don't care if it breaks the top side. I'm not going long on that. I'm only going long when it breaks the top side of a down channel. And I'm only going short if it breaks the bottom side of an up channel. So if we have a down channel and it breaks the bottom side down here, I'm not going short. We had that happen over here, I think. Yeah, right here. I am not going short on that. Down channels, I am really only looking long. So once this broke out, now I'm like, okay, time to go. This is an up channel. So could I use this channel to manage my trade? Yes. But am I using this right here to say, okay, it's time to go long on this breakout? No. I don't use up channels to tell me when to go long. I use up channels to manage the longs that I'm already in, but I'm not using them to get in. I'm using them to help me to figure out when to short this. So this is straight up parabolic. It's going absolutely crazy. And I think we're getting ready for a drop here pretty soon. I don't know when, but I kind of feel it. It's it's getting soon. But that's how you can use these channels to manage the trades that you're in and hold long enough. And then you can also use them to get into a trade. So when it comes time to short this thing, we could come back through. You've been experiencing a pullback for like three weeks now. <laughs> I think we're close, to be honest. The The bond market here in the United States is, is having a big bear day when this market is going berserk. Whenever these start to diverge, I think we're pretty close. But this is just a runaway, crazy market. I mean, crazy, crazy market. So it's kind of stair-stepping down. Again, did it ever make it to here? Never did. So what could we do on this? Draw another down channel and bring it to that low. And there you go. So good chance we're probably going to do this and continue to buy. If, if the bulls fail to hold this, that'll be the chance where it's going to start to sink back down. That could happen. But all I'm using is I'm using the S curve to then tie in those points together. And that's how I'm helping to predict the future of where to take my profits and help me to time shorts even better instead of waiting for it to break the trend. I can get a little bit early and lose small. Okay, any questions so far on this? I've gone over a lot and there's, I'm trying to teach like a week's course in 20 minutes, right? Um, I've been using these now for probably a year and a half, two years. So it's been a little bit and it was just me practicing and trying to figure this out. And then I just kind of found out based on off of my S curve that I've always used that algorithms are respecting this and it just worked. And it's been a back trade of this thing for years and years and years and years. And it just works. So it's, it's really helped me to narrow out my trading. Like right here, this is still telling me the bulls are in control, Right. Whenever you get a nice structured down channel, that tells me this is just, again, resting the RSI, bringing the RSI back down before this thing can go bullish again. Yeah, for sure. They, they totally help a ton. 
Are there any other questions? I know I'm trying to give it some time because I know you probably have to type it in and stuff, but are there any other questions on the stuff that I have so far on how we can use this? And then I want to show you a couple of trades that I'm looking at right now. So this should be the spot where the bulls are at. Let's see if they hold it. Failing to hold, but we have to wait for this candle to close. Let's see if the bulls try to bounce this up on the bottom side of that channel. There you go. So it closed right up there. This is probably a place where some bulls step in, I think. Doesn't have to. Remember, it doesn't have to hold these channels, but it makes a lot of sense that it does. So we drew this channel earlier. In fact, I have this in the wrong spot. This needs to go on the bottom of that. There we go. I need to put it right on the bottom of that wick. And there you go. It touched it to the T. So if you ever you're having false breakouts a lot, check your channels because you might have them drawn in, in the wrong place. You want to make sure that they're right on top of the wicks and right on the bottom of the wicks. And that's how you're going to draw them. So once I moved it right to the bottom of that, that's exactly where we bounced. So this might continue to go down. Really, though, this up channel is what that's what we're watching. Right, We are watching to see, do the bulls continue to hold this? If we fail and retest and then the bears actually step in, this could lead to some good selling, possibly. So far, though, this has been pretty structured selling, which means it's just resting before it goes more bullish. And that kind of makes sense. You should sell a long position whenever it hits the top side of an up channel. So let's say you are getting in long right now. Let's say you are buying this, okay? Perfect retest of an S curve right there. I'd probably wait for it to get a little bit lower if I were anyone, but let's say we're buying this guy. Where would a good target be? The top side of that channel would be a really good target to go long. That makes a heck of a lot of sense. All right. So I, me personally, I would probably wait for it to come down a little bit lower. So let's move this alert. Let's move it to right here. I like it around the 15 minute 10 EMA. And that's what this neon green line is. If this thing comes down, this is a pretty good buying spot. So if we came over here to spy, right? And we were looking at like the 515 strike calls. Let's see here. I want this to come down a little bit lower. Hold on. Sorry about that. I had a sneeze. I didn't want to have that on the camera. But um, again, this makes uh, maybe even just a smidge lower too. Like I, I don't mind this. Right. If we take this off, what are we doing here? Strong breakout, retesting back down to a key level, high probability we're coming back up to that key level. High chance, right? So if I put on these channels, it actually makes sense that we do hold and bounce right here. How many times has it not gone to the EMA and then just bounces and leaves without you? A lot of times, right? So these just kind of help me tie it in and the bulls are starting to step in right now. So I may have missed my chance. Like right there would have been the chance to pull that call up. And where would I, where's my target going to be? Well, if I got in there, I'd have my stop kind of outside that channel. And my target would be the top side of this guy. So that's somewhere in here. It's about two, two and a half hours I could get out of this trade right here. Again, I would want this just a hair lower. I would like this to come down just a smidge more. So even move the entry down to there a little bit more. Move the stop a hair lower as well. And see if this couldn't be a bouncing spot to close things out pretty strong. That's what it looks like to me. Why? Because we're getting structured selling going through this. Go back to a three minute here. Oh, I thought I had a lower, a higher low there, but probably going to have one more little dip. And if this is holding, this should be about the spot where the bulls come in. And if, if this is going to work, we should hold this up channel. As long as we don't close outside of it, it might get a little bit lower than it, but as long as we don't close outside of it, we're good. And as you can tell right here, this was a trap. We closed outside of it, went right back inside of it, and then shot to the moon. So this is, this is pretty easy to figure out. Number one, if you're right or if you're wrong. 
So it makes it a lot easier. And there is a chance that my channel could be off over here, right? There is always that shot where let's say I go and let's draw another one and let's connect these two highs and then bring it down to here. Do I get a connection on that? Um, I kind of do. I'll change the color up. I don't want to do white. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I think this is a pretty decent buying spot right now for these calls. Like, I'll probably... And then if we go up to like 516, yeah, that's not bad. So it's it's kind of an experiment, right? I'm just trying to figure out what the markets are respecting the most. And actually this red channel is holding pretty well, which means it's possible that this actually could come all the way down to here and then bounce. Does it have to? No. Is this blue channel also valid? Very much so. And now we just wait and see which one works out, right? Now we're just sitting back and going, okay, let's see which ones the algorithms are paying attention to. I like this buying spot through here just because it's a strong support. It makes a lot of sense and it makes, I mean, it really, it looks good that this thing is going to be getting some sort of bounce. So. So if you do not watch the market, but you use a profit taker, would you pick a level on the channel where you expect it to turn? Yep, yeah, exactly right. That's what I would be doing. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to wait for it to get a little bit lower off of this. I like this for a buy. It might not get there. It might just leave without us. But... I'm using all of this, and again, I'm just using this example to help you to see how how you can play this. Another one right now that I'm using on a swing trade is this one. So if we look at a daily chart on Lulu right now, Lululemon, we are having a really nice down channel. And then you take that same angle, you copy it down, and that's been the exact bouncing spot. Is it possible that Lulu comes all the way down to here? Possible. But if Lulu starts to get some strong daily candle closures outside of the channel, and then on a retest, I'm going to start buying because I believe Lulu is probably heading up to 511, 512. So this is just pressure building here, getting ready. We haven't broken any trends, right? That's not a higher low in my book. So we're still good. So anytime it's bullish, but you're getting lower highs, that's just a down channel. That's telling you it's getting ready to go bullish. It's just a matter of when trying to time it up. So either this is going to reject hard and it's going to come down to here, possible, or we break out strong, retest, and take off to the moon. So this is one trade that I'm watching very, very closely. Watching it very, very closely. Cool. So as you can see, the bulls are still buying right up off of this down channel. I know there's a lot of, a lot of stuff on here, but let me see if I can't just make this a little bit more see-through. I'm on the wrong one. There you go, make it easier to see. So it's possible that we do come down into the bottom of this, but most likely we're getting pretty dang close to a bounce here and to finish the day out pretty strong through there. Cool. What other questions do you have? And the, the, happy to answer anything on this. I know I kind of went through this fast, but I tried to just give you a crash course on, on how this works. Are we pretty lost or do we like, okay, well, I kind of get it. Now it's just a matter of putting some reps in.
You're not. Okay. <laughs> kind of getting it. All right. It's not bad. We're coming into my little buying spot here. So it might be worth trying to grab something off of this. If it'll even get there. It might not. Yeah, definitely. It's it's going to take, by the way, this took me, you know, years to figure out and to practice. But now that you've got the information I didn't have, just put more reps in and it'll start making a lot more sense. So let's figure out if it does this. I, I want to watch this trade with you so you can kind of manage it a little bit. I'm, I'm running short on time here, but I have to grab another event. I still got like 10 minutes. Good. Any interactions between a stock and the upper lower bound? No, I don't really have any any rules around that. What I, I want to see it hold it. That's my main thing. As long as we're not closing below it, I kind of like this to make it one dip and then get bought up pretty quickly. That's what I would want to see. I'm not sure if it would do that or not, but let's see if I so I'm just running my analysis tool real fast here and seeing if we can't get to 516. Thinking for S curve, we usually say we can take three max, four in a row. Um, all good, no problem. I just want to make sure you guys have it. I can jump into a few other things, but I don't want to just keep piling things on because I know that was a lot. I want to make sure that you're getting some questions answered on that so far. Are you saying like S curves in a row like that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, this is this is very, very extended, right? We expect a bigger pull, 100%. Yep. So this is kind of just reading the room a little bit. And so that's why if I do get in on this, it's going to have to like work perfect. We had a perfect S curve here. And, and this is something that I've been doing a little bit lately. This year, whenever we catch these big bear squeezes, so there were a lot of people that got embarrassed down here. And then they woke up today, me, myself included, woke up and like, man, this is super bullish. So whenever you catch these big bear squeezes, they tend to keep on running. So what I like to do is I like to buy it off of the 15 minute 10 EMA. And if it fails to hold that, I just exit it. If it holds it, I'll go up to the next S curve key level and see how well it goes from there. But at the moment, I think there's a high chance that we're going to go up to like 516 today. Pretty good shot. I just think we might be coming into here real quick. Um, sorry, I'm just telling my group about this trade. Oh, let's see if it does that. 
<laughs> Sorry, Marcus Melvin. I'm leading like 100 people on all these trades right now. So I want to make sure I'm at least just giving them some forewarning and giving you a chance to ask anything. But definitely extended. And on a 15 minute, we put in a perfect S curve, which means the bulls are still here. And that tells me a high probability that we're going to be getting up into this level now. So let me move an alert. I think 516 area makes a lot of sense. And then again, if we turn back on our channels, if we were going back to our channel area, that would make a lot of sense. Bounce back up to here, that's 516 would be about the top side of that channel, and then it'd be time to exit. All right. So let's just see. This very well could be the bottom right here, and then it just starts to bounce. So if I just did five of these, I'm trying to be patient. I want this to come down just a little bit more, but it might be worth getting into like five calls right now. Some options is what I'm looking at doing. You could do this with shares. Probably grab like five now and then five when it gets a little bit lower. Okay. Order. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some of those now. Five fifteen strike. Seven nine fill. Okay. And now we'll just see. So I was hoping we could make it a little bit lower. We still can, but the bulls are starting to show up. So I legged into half an hour right now and I'll get into the other half an hour right here if it does it. But now what I want to see is a break above. I want to see, it probably does pull back some here, but I want to see a break above this down channel. So let me change the color of this guy. And you know what? I can just get rid of this. Well, let me change the color of this one to like green. There we go. So this green channel, if we can get a close out above that, it's probably going to go crazy. So if we break out here and it comes back, that'd be the time for me to add some to this trade. I've got a lot of screens. <laughs> well, I, I just manage so much that I have my Zoom over here, trading over here, broker over there. Yeah. Let's find out if these bulls are going to be strong or if this is going to come down into this range here. There is a chance that this could fall right down and then I'll buy the other five. I need to get that ready. And then I'll just add that into it. So come down, buy my full R, and this should be the bouncing spot. I should see strong bulls through there. Yep. Yep. Um, they expire today and I bought the 515 strike. So already in the money because it's so late in the day. I don't want to go out of the money. And then we'll, uh, this is on spy and then we'll just see if it works out. No matter what, I can lose very, very small if it doesn't. And if it does, I can win pretty big. So up here will be about a hundred to 200% return, give or take, depending on how fast it gets there and how high of a move we get. And again, I think 5.15.90 is a very, there's a very high probability that we make it to this orange line. High chance. I just don't know when. Sooner the better. But that's how I play it. Based on some channels. So again, I've got, if we go to a three minute, it makes a little bit more sense. We're kind of just resting, right? We were overbought on the RSI. This is just a resting pattern. It's letting everything rest before we get ready to go bullish again. And so if we break out of this, retest, time to add some more, probably going to go screaming up higher. If not, this is going to come down to here, and this is where your bull should be at. This is back at the bottom side of this channel. Come through there, and we'll see if it can make it down there. If it does, I'm ready to get into my full R size right now. So this was just in case this thing leaves without me. I'm in half an R. I can always add more up here. And then if it comes down to where I actually want to buy this thing, 
I can get into my other half an hour, reduce my dollar cost average some. And then I want to see some buyers. Like we'll, we'll need to see pretty strong buying there. If it kind of hesitates around here for a while, it might be in trouble. Um, what time frame do you think works best? It just matches. Um, no, I'm not using volume profile. The time frame just matches whatever you're looking at. So I'm caring about what's going to happen over the next 30 minutes to 45 minutes. So it doesn't really do me a whole good to be on an hourly chart. There's nothing there, right? Doesn't really help me out a whole lot there. <clears throat> do I need to be on a one minute chart? Well, it could help, but oh, we're at a we're at that spot, so I need to get ready to buy this thing up if it starts to go. Let's see if it actually gets down there or not. It might. Let's see if it does. Um. So for me, I like about the five minute, which is going to tell me kind of where we're going to be at for the next hour. So I'm just trying to play the S curve. So right now this is by the dip territory. And I think over the next 30, 40 minutes, we should be finding some bulls coming through here. But first things first, let's see if this comes here. So I'm going to get ready to press the buy button. Come on down just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. <laughs> oh man it didn't even give me a chance to get in it, it still might right we are below this up channel now which i think is kind of a trap hopefully this thing bounces pretty strong we want to see a strong bounce there is a chance that this just loses and if it does i can lose small right lose a couple hundred bucks if i'm right make 900 dollars. like that's the game that we want to play So now we'll just see if this wants to play or not. That might have been it. Dang it. Again, I just needed this just a penny, a couple pennies lower, and I could have added some more into there. But at this point now, let's see if this can just take off. If it fails, that might actually be a little weak. Take a look at what the 15 minutes doing. 15 minutes still looks pretty good. I notice I use alerts. Are those on channels on longer time frames? No, alerts are just kind of marking out areas that I want to pay attention to. So I want to pay attention to this area. And then I want to pay attention to this area. So if ever I'm not at my computer or I'm just busy explaining something, I can know what to do when Spy gets to here. It'll notify me on my phone and on the computer. And I can go, oh, okay, cool. I need to go and manage this trade. Yeah. Of course. So again, this is just price action, right? It's just figuring out what it's trying to do. Is it possible that we're going to come down to the bottom of this red channel? It's possible. And then we should get bought up. That's what should happen. We'll see if it actually does. In fact, I think we should start seeing some bulls coming through this pretty dang quick. There's only about an hour left in the day, so we don't have a ton of time for this to just mess around. I want this to be working pretty soon. But yeah, we'll see if it can get it. Sorry, I'm trying to get you guys this trade before I go, but it's not wanting to do it. And I have to bounce out here in a couple minutes. Any other questions on these channels of how they work? The green line, th this channel right here, or is there a different green line you're talking to? Oh, the EMA. This is the 15 minute 10 EMA. And I keep it the 15 minute time frame across all my all across all my time. So no matter no matter what time frame I'm on, it's always the 10 EMA on a 15 minute. You do that by just double clicking on it and then down here on time frame. So I selected the 10 EMA and then on time frame just select 15 minutes and that'll always keep that one on there.
My pleasure. My friends, there's no other questions. That's about all the time that I about have. So I'll kind of kick it back on over. I hope you guys got something out of this. Again, I poured as much as I could into this 45 minutes, but hopefully it helped. And it, now it's just a matter of repetition to kind of get used to it. I think it was it was really great, Tony. Where it was uh, awesome watching you um, sit all uh, occupied with the trade, meanwhile, and actually watching it uh, crawl through these channels that you that you drew. Uh, this was um, this was very inspiring, and I now I understand what Peter has been uh, chanting about for the last month or so. So this was uh, really great. We're definitely going to try and and um, incorporate this into our our. Um, uh, our uh, stock analysis that we do. Uh, thank you so much yeah. uh, for coming yet another time. Uh, we really yeah, do enjoy pleasure. having you. My pleasure, guys. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Thanks. <laughs> Bye. See you guys.